off season like for you? You know, kind of being able to not have to deal with rehab and more just preparing for the upcoming year. Oh, it's been tremendous. Um, it's been a great off season, probably. Uh, physically, one of the best ones I've. There is the best one I've ever had, but most important, importantly, uh, spiritually. Um, so, yeah, it's been great. What were the goals? Like, what did you kind of set out to, to try to do this off season? Uh, really, just um, reverse all my injuries throughout my history. Um, I, I've I succeeded at that. Um, just treatment, like taking care of each different little parts of my body. Uh, I think sleep, uh, just <laughs> refining everything, um, oh, overall well-being, everything, improving everything, and just kind of you know becoming the best version of myself. So that's uh, pretty much what I've been doing. So. How much different do you feel coming into this OTA or whatever than I guess last year, even the first year you got here? Best I felt. Yeah. So I probably best I felt since college, maybe. Yeah. It's been a long time. I've, I haven't felt like this in, I think, ever. So, but it's been truly a blessing. So, I'm excited about it. You said spiritually, you feel that's mm-hmm. something you worked on. Is there something you did this off season to? Uh, I think I've just been consistent, just getting my Bible every morning. You know, just that's that's it. But yeah, some days I don't. Some days it's like you can become complacent, maybe because you didn't get enough sleep or something. But just like kind of uh, creating a routine and just like just having superior habits. I think uh, I was talking to like one of my mentors like a long time ago. And he was like, only way to truly be great um, was Kevin Green. He was like, it's, you have to have superior habits in everything you do. And I think this off season, that's kind of like one thing that's clicked with me. And it, I just, like, you know, when, uh, when he passed like two years ago, um, it still didn't even click then. And so I think just having different injuries and different obstacles in my life has, has pushed me to that point. So I think that's that's where it started. When the Jets came to you about um, making an adjustment to your contract, mm-hmm. I mean, there was players sometimes get it and it's just – moving money around, but you gave some back, like you agreed to take a little bit of a cut. What mm-hmm. is that decision and why did you do it? Um, a bunch of reasons. I think first of all it was like more so like I love being here and then, you know, um it's not like I already got I have a lot of money, I don't really buy much. But then it's like also thinking about it, it's like not like it ever got to that point, but like I think this. I mean, if it ever came to it, which I guess it did. I just wish it would have been sooner. Um, if the quarterback was Rodgers, I mean, almost like God is talking to me because like my career started chasing this quarterback. I got four sacks against him, and my career damn near ended in the pursuit of this quarterback. So, kind of no brainer from upstairs to be like, "Hey, you need to be here." So, um, so yeah. I mean. If it ever came to that point, that's, that decision was made in February. It just, you know, just my wish it just would have been done sooner because I could just focus on training and not. I don't like contracts and stuff like that. I'm not like big enough. Like yeah, I like money, but it's not like a big part of my life. You know, my family's taken care of, so easy, easy decision. Have you reminded Aaron about those four sacks at all? I think he knows. He uh, <laughs> he, he knows because I remember because every time I see him, he's like uh, he's like. Chill, chill. <laughs> but like that's his, that's his demeanor. I remember we played him when I got those four sacks. I'm like, we're up 20 points. I just sacked this dude like four times, and then um, he looks at me. He's like, 58. Chill. I'm a rookie. I'm like, we're blowing y'all out. He came back 21 points in the fourth quarter. I was like, all right. I see why he's uh, <laughs> I see why he's that guy. So you know, uh, yeah. What has he done for this building, this locker room, everything? I mean, I think you already know. I mean, this and I really didn't really get a chance to see it um, because I just I've been at home with my girl, um, and but I mean, you know, it's been every it's been everything that people have talked about, written about, and I don't want to put too much pressure on his plate. Um, but you know, the way he elevates the, the team, like his you know his cool demeanor. I mean, I kind of just see him as you know, like I played played against him and went against him in practice. Same guy. Um, but yeah, I mean, just ele- elevates everybody around him, you know. Um, that's that's Zach included, you know. what I'm saying that he gets the opportunity to sit there and learn, and you know, um, from a guy like that, you know, it's just his overall being here. It just is gonna it's gonna help the team. You say you love being here. Mm-hmm. The reason that you took that. What, what do you love about being here? Being I mean, it's open windows, not too cold. I mean, everybody has a mindset here to get better at what they want to do. You know what I'm saying? Those are the type of people I want to be around. Those are my, my D-line group, my coach. I might not agree with him on every single thing, but his his job is really to, to get the best out of everybody in that room. Everybody in the D-line room is they're trying to get the best out of themselves. So, like, 
that type of culture and that type of mindset, and especially in a world that's like really, really negative, is uh, so valuable. Um, so I just I love every part of this. I mean, fresh fruit. You know, they just got bison in the cafeteria. I'm like, bro, like, um, like, I mean, it's not really like, you know, I yeah. There's money other places that you could be at, and I can go and get that money. But it's like, I plan on doing the stuff that I wanted to do, and I'm just gonna get that money back. I plan on playing until like at least 35. So if I can't make like a couple million dollars of what they're paying defensive ends back. I mean, you know, I mean, I must suck really, really bad. I need to go back in the gym. So, so um, I'm sorry. Are yeah. you motivated? What's your frame of mind in regards to the fact that you did take a pay cut to last year at contract mm -hmm. and they draft an edge rusher in the first mm -hmm. round? Does that light a fire under you? Or? No, I mean, I, yeah, I mean, I, I can add that to the list. But, I mean, dude, I, I, I've already, like, I've been in the NFL for so long. I've never been on – a winning team. I haven't made my Pro Bowls. I haven't made a Super Bowl. I haven't, you know, I've had multiple, multiple injuries, and I'll come back better each time. Like, that 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 motivation that you're talking about is like a speck compared to some of the stuff that that, that goes through my head every single day. So I mean, I mean, I guess I should add that to my list, but I mean, it's not even it's really not even that, you know, big a deal. When you talk about the best you felt. Think that's gonna look like on the, the best version of myself, production-wise, um, I don't know. You just gotta tune in and see. You know, um, just tune in. I mean, I was I was kind of getting to a point uh, right before I got hurt, but this is different. You know, um, yeah. I just you just gotta wait and see. Double-digit sacks. Yes. Is that a goal or is that that's a goal and that's gonna happen? It's gonna happen. Mm -hmm. It won't be. Rushing against me, you know. <laughs> oh, I'm I'm that bad. I gotta go against guys. I was like, shit. <laughs> all right, I need to evaluate the film. Uh, all right. How do you know what's gonna happen. Faith, you know. Um, I don't know what else to, you know. You want me to give you a different besides faith? Is your weight the same or different or what? I'm a little bit lighter. Um, I might lose a little bit more weight. I'm definitely lost a lot of fat. So. Um, what, what? How much body percentage did you lose? Uh. I don't know. Sometimes it's different on a bot pot on a DEXA, but like maybe like three on a DEXA, three 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 percent more. But I still, but I mean, it's, I'm I'm in a really good shape now because like it's June and we still got till what September. So we'll see. Ask me again in like two months. I'll tell you because I'll do the bot pot again. Carl, what does Quinton Williams bring to the defensive line All pro, uh, you know, great guy, leader. Um, I mean, everything that's. I don't know, nothing really bad to say about him, but he brings everything, you know. Um, so really excited for him, and I think he just had a, a baby. So, um, yeah, I mean, that's the greatest gift that he could possibly – this has been a hell of a year for him. I mean, he went all pro, had a baby. I mean, God's good, man. How do you balance your training? Because you're obviously a very uniquely built defensive end as far as how thick and powerful you are. A lot of guys are, you know, more slender and light that way. How do you balance keeping that flexibility and that mobility and getting as big as you are? Uh, I think that was one of the big things I got into in the offseason. She's done a great job. Her name is Nadine. Um, just getting stretched every morning, like three times a week. That was something that's not necessarily a weakness, but when you do have that much muscle mass, you have to, you know. And then I think when we left for – I tried to listen to everything and get information for everything. Sala was like, you know, make sure you maintain your flexibility. And then I thought about it in my career. Like, you know, some of the best times and less injuries I've had is when I always maintain my flexibility so I mean, just getting stretched out maybe like you know three times a week um something i added to the off season um i think it's helped how do you feel about your career so far in the nfl um i don't know i talked to my family about that and they were like you've done a tremendous job you know um I don't think any other athlete has ever done anything I've ever done. I don't think anybody athlete has ever had this many amount of injuries, serious injuries, and come back better each time. I don't think um, many fourth round picks make it to a second contract. But in my mind, I still haven't accomplished much. So it's just like, you know, I got to be able to humble myself. And, and I also got to be able to be like, take a step back and be like, you accomplished some stuff. Like, you know, I, I, I even like just talking to my mom, she was like, you need to, I was freaking out about last season. I need to do better, better, better. She was like, she was like, son, you just had this, this, and this happen. You were able to stay healthy and get through all these practices and play and produce. You're, you're not superhuman. I'm like, you know what? You're right. So I do have to take some time back to like take the pressure off myself, you know? Um, 
so yeah, I, I feel like I've done well, really, really well. Not what I want, but I've done really, really well. You know, I had to t- take some time to think about that. Is this as close to superhuman as, close to superhuman as you felt? Yes, but I still got to keep working because I just I got so much more I can improve on. So happy about it. You know, I'm happy where I'm at right now. You would like to retire here, I would assume? Of course, but, you know. That's not always the case with, with everything in the NFL. What I, my main goal here is to, and what I really, really wanted to do in our world, I really came in to set out to do is give the Jets the best version of Carl Lawson. And that's what I've been working on each and every day. Like, they, got, they gave me an opportunity to, like, provide for my family. My, you know, like, you know, my sister goes to college. My grandparents have a retirement home. My mom and dad are, like, you know, well taken care of. I can buy as much anime stuff as I want. Like, <laughs> like they gave me an opportunity to do that. So I just want to be able to give them the best version of myself in the time that I'm here. So that's all I'm working on. When you hurt your Achilles the first time, then you tweaked it again. Mm-hmm. You still practice, like you said. You still played in every game. But what couldn't you do? Or where were you most limited? Where you, like, you were It just like, because when you – Basically, when you tear it twice, you have to go through the rehab process again. So it's like it's like being on a scooter. So for the first couple months, you have to be on a scooter, and then you have to be on a scooter again. So you're not walking for like total like maybe like in that five month range. So you just got to go through the process. You got they took out a hamstring and put it in the Achilles, and so you got to just you have to sit. So that's like that's why it's been like the most. It was the hardest injury because there's nothing you can do to work through it. It's a tendon, so it just takes time. And so I really had to just be diligent and just like put my head down so I can um, come out and contribute. So it's just, it's just a, it's a nasty process. Um, I remember you saying that it hurt. Like it, it was hurting you at different points last year where like you noticed it was there. Are you at a point now where you don't notice it anymore? Oh, it's completely gone. I, like God is good. So I mean, like I got past that and I just took time since I had time to just go through each, every injury that I've had so far and just work on it. And you know, now, now I feel, I feel amazing. Um, so, just gotta keep going, um, keep the process going. So, yeah. Is it, neat, is it neat knowing that when you get off the field as a defense, you'll be handing the ball over to Aaron Rodgers? One hundred percent. You know, I'm, that's you know that's why he's here and so excited for uh, him and what we can do. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. See you a different vibe here with Aaron and Billy. Yeah, it's a different vibe. Um, no, he, he sets the bar. He, um, he sets expectation with his resume, with his name, and you know the way he, he approaches the game every single day. So, um, just speaking as a linebacker and as a defense, you know, not every day you get a chance to go against a future Hall of Fame quarterback and you get to test your your skills, your knowledge, and your ability every single day. So, as a defensive player, you know we're we're honored and you know, honestly really blessed just to be able to be in this situation to try to grow um, as a better defense uh, together and as a team. He seems to have no problem just casually talking about winning the Super Bowl here. Is that, does that take some getting used to? I know you've been on teams that always thought they could win the Super Bowl, but to overtly say that, you think that's it. Um, no, not for me. When I when I signed here, that was that was my goals and expectations. So I'm happy to hear him saying. I'm happy for more people to be talking about it because that's that's why we're here. I mean, <laughs> I've been on this team long enough. Y'all y'all heard me say this plenty of time. Man. We're here to win. We're here to win championships, and we're here to be a great team for a long time. So um, with with him being there, that just that just gives our gives our opportunity a little bit more. It just goes up a little bit more. And I say, you know, nothing's gonna happen. Nobody's gonna give anything to us. But <clears throat> to understand, you know, this small window. And opportunity that we have with the with the generational quarterback that we have right now and you know the things that we're doing the way we're working and competing against each other learning from each other um, you know r- running routes against each other talking out the plays about hey what did you see here from me or you know talking to the offense like hey I'm seeing this from you so maybe you need to I mean, show this a little different so little things like that every day is just going to make us better. What have, you, what have you observed about Carl Lawson in his second year back from his injury? Um, Honestly, not too much has changed. Not saying he hasn't gotten better, but you know he's still showing that that burst of speed, running to the ball after the play, that tenacity of that that high motor. So um, for him, you know, just just really just gonna be him. Um, <clears throat> just you know, still learning the defense. Always gonna be stuff to learn within the defense and within his game, and um, you know, just making plays, keep getting sacked, and get, keep getting after the quarterback. Does, what are your thoughts on the pass rush? Does it excite you working behind those those guys? Yeah, it's very excited, uh, especially in our in our pass game. Um, you know, as as most people know, with our defense, you know, linebackers, um, you know, we play a lot in the cover, so that's that's a couple seconds that we don't have to cover if we if I do line getting after the quarterback. CJ, it was a couple of years ago that you were frustrated 
visibly about the lack of respect you guys were getting from other teams around the league, and you were adamant about changing that. You said it wasn't, you know, if it was because of the history of the Jets or because of the way he does the thing. Can you talk about the attitude in the locker room now as it exists headed into this year with these expectations? Um, if anything, it's, it's going to put more targets on our back. Um, whether the disrespect came from, you know, people chalking up a W when they saw saw the Jets on the roster, I mean, saw the Jets on the schedule or the history or whatever it was, um, you know, now we can be, oh, we can go sack number eight and, you know, embarrass them then. It's, going, it's just a bigger target on our back, and, you know, that's that's exactly what we want. Uh, we want them to give us, give, want people to give us everything that they have. We want to go into other people's stadium and hear every single thing they have to say so we can shut them up after the game is over. So uh, that's, that's what it's going to take to win the Super Bowl. That's what it's going to take to, to grow as a team, be competitive, and um, be able to win these tough games that we have coming in the future. With that, just, type, of, oh, with that type of like attitude or confidence, you guys feel like y'all are the bullies in the AFC East now? I mean, we don't, we don't feel like we're anything. We're just being ourselves. So, um, um, honestly, we just have to come in every day and, and do our job. Um, it's, it's not our job to, to kind of headline what, what we are or you know, how we're going to play, play our game because, you know, our, our pads and our, and our helmets and the way we play football, that's, that's going to show and, and tell how, how, what kind of team we are. How hard is it going to be to duplicate or exceed what you guys accomplished on defense last year, finishing, I think, fourth overall? Um, it's going to be very hard. Um, it's, it's never easy, you know, finishing top five, top ten in the league um, in defense. Um, you know, we think about you know a couple of years ago, you know, we was one of the worst defenses, and that was a it was a long it was a long tough season. Um, but through those tough losses, through those tough times, we learned a lot as a team, as a defense. And I know for me personally, I learned a, I learned a lot about my game. I learned a lot about our defense and how offense attack it. And we take that into to year year three now of, of all us being together with this defense. It just we just brings more opportunity for us to keep growing. Um, you know, we can we can show different things because we trust each other. We can look at different things. We can try different things because we know the type of personnel that we have. We know the type of players that's that's in our room on the defensive side, and we just have that confidence. So. Um, you no, know, we just we just trying to keep building forward, and like I said before, just having um, you know Rogers on the other side, testing us every single day when we're trying to you know, on every single possession, every single down, <clears throat> every single um, drill that we do. That's just making us better. Quincy Williams um, back with the team, signed an extension this off season. What's your relationship been like with him, uh, and how have you seen it grow over the last couple of years? Um, our relationship has been really well. Um, it's, it's definitely grown every single year. And, um, you know, just watching him, you know, grow as a leader, being more vocal, you know, understanding his job. Now he's at the level now where he can he can process what offense is doing. Um, he can see see different um, different route concepts. He can see you know different run styles. You know, me and him talking more. You know, he's helping me with communication. So just seeing that part of his game grow, that just makes my job a lot easier and a lot easier for him because he's a he's a very fast linebacker. So when he's when he's speed up and not saying things clearly, he can kind of he can get a little loose. Um, but when he's focused, locked in, seeing plays, going good with his feet, he's one of the best linebackers in the league. CJ Quinnen's not here today, but Robert Sala expressed confidence today that the deal will get done. How does he make your job easier, given you have perspective on the field that we don't? What makes him so good? Now, just his ability to, to get in the backfield, run run up pass game. Um, you know, as a linebacker, when you have de- defensive linemen like we have that can get up the field, get vertical, and also in the run game, you know, demand double teams or you know go blow up a you know, a belly or a zone read. That just make my job a lot easier when it comes to coverage. Um, just looking at the quarterback or in the run game when I'm I'm free running around. So just his presence on the field is, is key. Have you spoken to Quinn? Uh, I mean, not really about football, but you know, just just talking. Yeah. CJ, there was a a lot of expectation that you would rework your contract this offseason because your cap number is pretty high. Um, did the Jets approach you about that? Um, not me personally. Um, they they talked to my agent. Um, I don't really. I'm not really concerned or worried about it too much. Uh, I come here to work, work every day. Now I'm focused on getting better and trying to win the championship and be the best player I can be. So, um, if whatever happens, happens. But I'm not. That hasn't been one concern for so me. It's like still ongoing. Um, maybe I'm. I'm not sure. CJ, what was your reaction to the trade for Chuck Clark and being a former teammate of his? What can you say about his skill set? 
Uh, I was very excited to hear Chuck um, sign with us. You know, just being being a former teammate of his with the Baltimore Ravens, I just know the type of uh, the work ethic that he has, um, the type of just the football smarts, just the just just being a football player. Honestly, you know, some some players are good at like skiing. Some players kind of good at you know hitting the tackling. He's honestly just an all around great safety. He can tackle. He can be in the run game. He plays good pass coverage. Always gives good effort. And on top of that, he's a smart player. He's a smart player. So uh, whether it comes to you know often trying to scheme us up he's one of the guys that we can rely on when things get tough or one one call don't get to the other side he can be one of those other players that can be vocal and, and get the job done and demand um, high expectations from his room with jamie and sherwood i know it's hard for you to praise an over <laughs> being from alabama but as far as uh he seems ready to take a big step this year what are you seeing from him i'm just saying growth um him trusting his game, um, he's he knows all the positions. He knows his defense inside and out. Um, his work ethic is you know top level as well. So just another young player that's just grown every single year, going to year three now. This defense, uh, learning the system, being in the NFL. So he's just now it's just time for him to you know make those plays on the field. So um, going to this camp, you now we got a lot of players that's that's looking to break out and do some good things and get some playing time. So he's definitely going to be um, one of our players that we have to rely on on defense and special teams. CJ, around the league, one of the storylines this offseason has been some of the suspensions that have come down for gambling issues. Um, I'm curious, do you feel clear on the league's gambling policy? Is that a conversation you talk to the younger guys about to you know, make sure everybody's here and how you handle that? Yeah, um, the NFL does a great job, and, and our staff here does a great job of explaining the rules for gambling. So honestly, uh, I'm just as surprised as everyone else when it pops on a, on a ticker. I mean, I've been in this league a long time, and I don't think I've heard or seen this many suspensions from gambling. So I mean, I, but I don't know. So I mean, I hope. <laughs> Hope they get the message now, but I mean, yeah, it's not it's not good at all. So um, just got to be smarter than that. You think it's different now, CJ? From you know, like when you started, you wanted to gamble. Oh well, yeah. Now, yeah. Now, so easy to gamble. You can just, you know, <laughs> buy an app or download an app. Um, you know, so I'm not really a gambler, so I never really have to deal with that problem. But uh, you just gotta be smarter. You gotta be aware of surroundings. You gotta know the rules, and at the end of the day, really just don't gamble. Especially if you don't know what's you don't know what's actually going on or know the exact rules. Just don't do it. How do they, they teach you the rules? I mean, is it something written or is it articulated um, to you? And, and yeah, whether well, it's with a, the NFL man, mandated um, seminars that we have, we just had a few weeks ago. Um, you know, coaches, Coach Sala, having a team meeting, talking about it, and explaining it to us. Um, I think at one point we had like all the rules in our playbook. So if you really wanted to, you can look at all the fines and see how much they cost. You can look at all the rules. So um, every, every single step for you to know and understand the rules of gambling and things not to do is there. CJ, Burke was talking last week about how every year you're making these schematic changes and having a quarterback like Rodgers here will allow you to find where the weaknesses are more. I know you talked earlier about how he can help you, but is it – have you been able to see an example of that yet, or do you think they'll have to wait for training camps? Oh, yeah. As soon as he got here, you can see it. Um, you know, he, he has so much attention to detail where he's looking at – well, I don't want to give things away. He has a lot of attention to details. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. Um, and, it's, and it's helping our offense, and it's helping our defense every single day. So um, we, we definitely feel like we're getting better every day. Even today, I practice it. At one point, I felt like we was in a live game. But by the way, we was competing. So it's a lot of fun being out there with him. Hey, wake up. Thank you very much. Right. Appreciate it. Hey, y'all doing today? How are you doing? Good, good. Wait for my uh, <laughs> You're a sidekick? Hey. How you doing? Just start a question. Lincoln, how is uh, the offensive line kind of like the scheme and all that? Well, I'm not deep yet. I don't think, but with Keith Carter running things, how is it kind of changed for you guys? Uh, man, I, honestly, it's been going great. Uh, a lot of guys coming in. Uh, obviously, you know, uh, working with a new offensive line coach, there's like different terminology and stuff like that. But since day one, it's just been uh, from the rip, just been amazing uh, with uh, uh, teaching the, uh, the new the techniques and teaching the new verbiage to all the guys in the room, and uh, kudos to all the guys uh, showing up for voluntary OTAs, man. Uh, it means a lot. It means a lot to everyone here. Like, what, um, what's it been like getting to know Aaron and practicing with 
I mean, I've known Aaron for a long time. I played against him uh, uh, when I was in Detroit and in San Francisco, so I know quite a bit of him, uh, good and bad. And um, no, but he's uh, no, he's amazing. Uh, getting to work with uh, that caliber of player, uh, it makes it makes everyone better. Uh, everyone around him better. Uh, not only our offense, uh, with our offensive scheme, working with Hackett, but our defense as well. Uh, having those guys, exposing those guys to uh, some high-level stuff, man. So uh, it's been it's been really well, working really well, really really good, really good. When you put when you put him in the huddle, like when when Aaron is there under center, or behind center. I mean, how does that change things? Where, where does it make things different? Uh, he makes it different. He makes a difference with his confidence. He makes a difference with his communication. He makes a difference with his high level of play. Uh, you know, just having all that mesh into you know, um, that position alone, um, you know, uh, is truly special uh, working with someone that caliber. Um, and it makes everyone uh, be on their A game every day. When you talk about that communication, does he sit in, when you guys are sitting in meetings, is he telling you guys what he sees there or what he may make a left or a ringo call or something? I mean, he might be one of the first people to come up with a question, you know, to the coaches during install. He may be uh, one of the first people um, to, you know, uh, point out anything, you know, in meetings, uh, make an adjustment or tell him, tell us what he'll be thinking uh, during certain, uh, certain, uh, you know, uh, parts of parts of meeting, and which is great because you know uh, he's going to be the one in the huddle. So when you have that in meetings and you get that from the from the get go, you know what to expect when you're in the huddle. He's known as a guy who uses his cadence to his advantage, drawing teams off. The he's got tons of free plays over the years. What kind of is that something you guys are going through now, learning his cadence and trans? What kind of transition is that? Uh, I mean, uh, just you know, just learning learning everything that you know he brings to the table uh, is truly going to help our offense a lot. And um, uh, again, kudos to everyone, you know, showing up for OTAs and you know exposing themselves to that. Uh, it's been great working with them. Amazing. Bacon, has it been anything that surprised you? Um, like you said, you knew, you've known him a while, but you know he hasn't been your teammate. Is there anything like you're like, oh man? Ah, uh, you know, uh, as soon as uh, you know he he signed a dotted line in the. Uh, uh, you know, uh, as soon as he said he wanted to be a Jet, you know, went back and started watching some games, some old games uh, that we play, uh, played against him uh, in the past, and um, just you know, going through, uh, you know, what he can do, and then the, seeing that live in the huddle, you know, just you know, in OTAs, uh, it's it's uh, it's uh, it's it's really cool, man, just to see. Um, uh, the workings of everything, you know, just playing out, and the, the thought process goes goes behind everything that he does, and um, uh, it's really cool, you know. Uh, it's just it's just really cool, man. I can't, I can't really say anything else. It seems like you're a little bit in awe, almost. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you know, he's a fantastic player. I mean, I, I, like I said, I, you know, ever since my rookie year, I played against him, and uh, he's just been that every year, you know. Um, MVP player, golly, I mean, like, what, what else can you say? <laughs> what are his expectations for the offensive line? I know you have to block for him and open holes for the running game, but his specific view of what he wants from you guys. Uh, it's not only his his view for us, but also Coach Hackett's view, Coach Coach, uh, Coach Carter's view, um, you know, and it's extremely high for us, man. Uh, now we're here to work, and uh, again, kudos to everyone, you know, who chose to show up for voluntary OTAs, because, uh, you know, we understand what this team can be, and, you know, we're paying that time, to, you know, to work towards that. Can you practice against one of the best defensive lines in the league all those years in San Francisco? And I've got some really strong defenders to practice against here. What stands out about Quinn Williams? Ah, uh, man. <laughs> He is uh, he is a force to be reckoned with, man, and um, uh, so proud of the kid, man. Uh, you know, uh, getting to work with him last year. Uh, looking forward to working with him this year again in training camp. Uh, he's uh, <laughs> uh, he's a special player, uh, generational talent, um, man. Uh, he <laughs> it, it, it makes. Uh, it, he keeps me young, man, to be honest. He keeps me young and uh, working with him, uh, you know, uh, passing along my game to him and things he can work on. I'm, I'm happy I was helping him to, you know, kind of accelerate his game a little bit last year. But uh, but he did all the work. Um, he's, he, he's a guy that came in, did all the work, everything the coach asked him to. And um, uh, I'm so uh, very proud of him, the way he handled himself. He, he stayed healthy last year. And, um, you know, uh, looking forward for another great year for him. Talk about expectations. You played for a team in San Francisco that had those high expectations. 
do you, with a young, a lot of young players in this roster, do you have to talk to them about maybe not getting too far ahead of yourself? Either everyone's talking about playoffs and a Super Bowl run that you still actually need to accomplish it. Man, uh, you got to go one day at a time. You know, right now we're in OTAs. We're learning X and O's, uh, learning from Coach Hackett, learning from Keith, uh, learning from Aaron. Um, you know, we got to, you know, go back to ground zero a little bit and, you know, uh, learn the X and O's of football. And um, everyone, you know, outside looking in, everyone has high expectations. But, you know, there's no higher expectations from the your peer, peers in the room, your peers in the team, uh, you know, from your from your coaches. You know, uh, those are the guys that we're, we're counting on right now to hold us accountable. So, um, you know, all the outside stuff, man, like, yeah, we, we hear that stuff, but, like, we're not really listening to it. It's the guys in the room, and we see where this team can be because, you know, uh, it's our locker room. You know, uh, guys can look and say anything they wa want, but we, we see, you know, where this team's going. And, you know, uh, if we're blessed with some health this year, we're going to be a scary team. For you, for you guys on the line itself, um, got hit hard with injuries last year. How much do you think that's kind of skewed how good you could be? And you look at this year and, and guys like Dwayne, Kai, and AVT coming back, how much better you could be together? I mean, you can see that we got the talent. We have the talent in our room. Uh, you know, um, and obviously injury is a part of the game. And uh, unfortunately, we had, you know, some of that on our line last year. And um, But that's last year. This year is this year. A lot of those guys are coming back healthy. And um, we're looking to build on that health and uh, uh, create a, a special line with this group of young men that we have. So, um, you know, that's you know that's why I'm here, you know, to help those guys kind of, you know, uh, be their best version of themselves. Help, they can help me be my best version of myself in the best way we can help the team. What do you think of Makai's body makeover? Do you see him? <laughs> he wears an XL shirt, XL tank top. On purpose? He just, I mean, that's how you wear it. XL tank top. You can go ask him. Lincoln, what has it been like for you uh, being from Jamaica, coming to the New York, New Jersey area where there's so many Jamaicans and so much island culture? Have you been able to? Do some things and, and go to some restaurants. Yeah, man. Um, I mean, I've been. Mean, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> sorry, sorry about that. Uh, yeah, you know, I have family in Brooklyn. I have family in Brooklyn, so I'm, I'm out there sometimes, though. What have you observed about Carl Lawson, and have you played against him over the years? Carl Lawson? Yeah, have you played against Carl Lawson? He's in the other conference. Yes. Yeah, uh, I mean, I remember uh, it was. A couple of years ago, obviously, you know, we were playing with him last year, uh, but no, I mean as an opponent. Uh, a couple of years ago, when we were in uh, San Francisco, um, I don't think he, I'm not sure it was here. I don't, I don't quite remember. Where did he play again? Cincinnati. Cincinnati. Um, that's right. I, I, I'm talking about. I'm talking about our Carl. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Your so you, yeah, yeah, our call. Okay, I thought it was somebody totally different. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah, I, I remember him just being just a force to be working with, man. You, I mean, I, what I can tell you from last year, like, seeing this transformation, like, obviously, he has an injury, stuff going on with him, but he came back, uh, God, he came back hungry. He came back extremely hungry. I think he helped the, the defense line a lot. How much better do you think he can be a year removed from the Achilles? I mean, I can only see him tra uh, projecting up, man. Like, his trajectory, sky's the limit for him. And um, that's another thing, you know, guys special like that, if they're blessed with health, um, they can go up. Uh, they, the sky's the limit for those guys if they can play with health. Take a couple more. Everybody good? Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Um, uh, so, uh, Carl, being around Carl this week has been, been great. Um, having him back just, uh, 
swole, strong, powerful, explosive Carl. I mean, second year back from his Achilles, just moving even better, bending better. Um, you know, I, I can't wait to see him out here. Like, I mean, doing doing what he did one year off off an Achilles, just being a powerful force in the field. Um, you know, just like being powerful in his rushes, changing direction well, um, and now seeing him even, even move even better and knowing how Carl is, knowing his work ethic, knowing the way he trains, knowing the way he takes care of his body, the way he, he eats and prioritizes his, his nutrition. Um, you know, I'm super excited to have Carl back and just to just to play with him and rush with him. How important is the versatility that you guys have up front? You guys have like the true edge guys and then guys like Quinn in the middle, but there's also some flex guys like you and uh, Franklin Myers. How does that all fit together? Um, you know, we, we all feed off each other. You know, we all learn how to rush together. Like you said, we have different guys kind of everywhere. Um, certain guys bring certain things. Uh, but one thing about this group is we're all going to play with high effort. We're going to be violent players and we're going to play hard. Um, you know, this group played great last year and I, I think our ceiling's even higher this year with our additions this year of Al Woods, Quinn and Jefferson. Um, you know, just some of the players that we brought in is, is, is super excited you know first round pick will McDonald like we we have we have so much coming for us and um, I'm excited for what we can do this year Solomon, how would you describe what Quinnen brings to the line uh, Quinnen <laughs> just one of the best most dominant players in this league last year um Unbelievable to watch what he did. Uh, you know, 13 sacks or 13 and a half sacks, whatever he did. Um, just dominating play after play. Um, you know, I, I've been able to play with some great defensive linemen in my career. You know, Nick Bosa, DeForest Buckner. But what Quinn did last year and dominating every play was super special. And um, I, I can't wait to have him back and super excited about him. How would you compare the vibe around the team? this year as compared to last year at this time? Um, you know, it's it, the, the room is buzzing right now. Um, the building's buzzing, and it's buzzing for a reason. You know, you bring, you bring a solidified Hall of Famer like Aaron Rodgers, and it's going to change some things. Uh, just his leadership, his knowledge, um, the way he plays a game, you know he's going to put up points. You know he's going to play smart football. Um, you know, it, it just brings a, a whole new youthfulness around this team, even for the vets. Um, you know, we're just super excited, and, and we're excited about the potential, but we also know at the same time potential doesn't mean anything. Uh, we know we have to execute. We know we have to get on our P's and Q's, our X's and O's, and we have to be um, getting better every day because, you know, everyone else in the league is coming for the same thing that we want. So one guy can have that much impact? Uh, yeah, one guy can definitely have that much much of impact, and, you know, especially from the year we had last year, bringing him in is, is super exciting. You signed a contract to come back here uh, this offseason. Why did you do that? Was any other team... Mm-hmm kind of in the mix along with the Jets specifically why did you want to come back um you know yeah there were a couple teams in the mix but I always wanted to come back here you know the locker room that we had last year was special through the wins and losses we just got closer and closer um and you know just 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 knowing what Salah was building here and knowing the coaches here um I was very confident coming back here that we're going to build a winning winning team and then on top of that you you bring a guy like Aaron Rodgers and it makes your decision decision even better but you know it's uh you know coming back here was a no-brainer for me you know I loved what we did last year. I love how the D-line plays. I love how Coach Aaron coaches us. Um, so, you know, I was very excited to come back here and compete again and get a chance to uh, to get on the field with the Jets. So you're talking about that buzz around the locker room, around the building. I guess you guys are feeling unfinished business. Mm-hmm. It would be like a slogan for you guys this year. Say, um. Yeah. I mean. Yeah. It, c- it could be a slogan. It's like you know, one of our slogans is, is "Finish the wall." Um. You know, we have uh, along the wall in the, in, the, in in our hallway, we have all the games that we played, but we also have blank spots for the games that we missed. Um. And yeah, that 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 part of it is we want to fill in those games that the we want to fill in the wall. We want to make sure that every every section of the wall is filled in with games until the very last one, which is the Super Bowl. And that's our goal. That's our mission. But we have a lot of steps to get to before we get there. Um. It's we're, we're still we're still in. June, and we have a lot of work to do and a lot of, a long way to go. Your quarterback talks a lot about winning a Super Bowl here. Do you like that? Oh uh, yeah, I definitely like that. You know, that, you you want that to be everyone's mentality, but you also everyone needs to know the steps that go into that mentality too. Um, you know, all the little things matter. Everything matters. How you do one thing is how you do everything, and and that's what we preach. That's how Coach Sala preaches. That's how we, that's how we practice. Um, and that's just the the details and, and the minute focus that Aaron's bring to the team and that everyone's really honing in on. Coach Sala talked about flag bearers, guys he sees as communicating the message from the coaches to the locker room. He named you as as Mm -hmm. one of those guys who he values to do that. Can you talk about what that means to you Mm -hmm. and making sure everybody's on the same page, that they're taking Mm -hmm. those steps 
each moment that they need to? Yeah, no, that, that, that means a lot to me. You know, it's a huge honor to have, you know, your head coach say that. But um, the relationship we have, you know, it means a lot to me too. Um, but, you know, just, just to be respected by my teammates, be respected by the coaches, um, it's something that I work for every day. You know, I come into work, you know, I, I'm 100% effort every day, um, you know, for my guys, you know, to make sure that, you know, I'm here and I'm, I'm the best available for them. But I want to be that leader for them. You know, I'm going into my seventh year in the league. I've experienced a lot of ups and downs in this league. I've won a lot in this league. I've lost a lot in this league. So whatever experience I can bring, however I can help this team be the best team in the league, um, I'm going to do. And so whether, you know, it's being a flag barrier um, for coach and for this team, that's what I want to do and that's what I'm going to do. Colin, do you feel like you could have a different leadership role this year now that you're going into year two with this organization? You know, I do, you know, and, and I feel it already, you know, just kind of being around the guys and being more comfortable, being more comfortable speaking up, being more comfortable just kind of, you know, being myself and, and being energetic and, you know, just kind of having that kind of, kind of, uh, you know, that aura around me, you know, kind of try to pass off on the guys. Uh, you know, it's, a, it, it, it's fun to kind of have that weigh off my shoulder so I can just kind of be free and be the leader I can be and be the player I can be around these guys. So, um, well, you DJ look at, Reed, you had, uh, you were a teammate of his, right? Mm-hmm. In um, San, San Francisco, Francisco, yep. To go for when he was there where he got cut and now he's one of the best corners in the league, can you, can you talk about that? Mm-hmm. That was kind of unique. Yeah, no, I, 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 DJ Reed is another guy, you know, a, a guy that you love to show up to work with every day, a guy who's about all his details, a guy who's about his work. Yes, he's been paid, but I think that's only made him work harder. You know, some guys in this league, when they get paid, they take a breath. I think DJ just doubled down on what he's about. Um, he's a guy who still has a chip on his shoulder. He still feels like he has a lot to prove. You know, DJ gets snubbed out of a lot of lists, about a lot of rankings, about, you know, top 10 corners, top five corners, and, you know, he should be on there, you know. So, you know, uh, going from, I remember that year in, in, in San friend where he tore his pack and he got cut and I was just thinking like why we cut DJ DJ just had a crazy rookie year um, showed so much potential and then he goes off in Seattle and we play him in Seattle he gets a pick on us and you know just that was just kind of who DJ Reed is and um, you know he's an unbelievable player unbelievable human being um, I love what, coming to the office and working with him every day. When you look at a uh, Will McDonald's you know, college career at Iowa State, in ways mm-hmm. that kind of mirrored yours where, you know, you play a lot of positions that you might not play in the NFL. Uh-huh. Have you given him tips on how that transition might be for him as he goes from playing, like, three technique or four eye to get outside of it? Yeah, no, I mean, Will's career, college career was, was crazy. Like, I didn't even realize he was playing a lot of four eye, yeah. and I'm like, dude, like, you're you're way too lanky and athletic to be stuck out, stuck in there, but now the fact that he's going to be on the edge the whole time and be able to use his, his length and his ability to bend, um, it's going to be scary. Like, you know, seeing the things he's already doing in practice is, is very impressive. Um, and, and he's still learning. He's still learning the playbook. He's still learning how we, how we do things around here, and he's still performing at a high level. So, I'm excited for Will. I'm excited for what he's going to do this year. Um, definitely, you know, the D line here like we're very close and we're, we're all coaching each other all, all helping each other out make sure everyone's on the same page um that's special about our room and so will's going to be up to date and um you know i'm excited for him to get out there have you had any like specific advice on what that transition's like because uh i don't just playing inside uh-huh. college playing inside the nfl outside from the nfl outside can be a lot yeah, I know it's definitely different. You know, going from a four eye to a to a nine technique and a, and a and playing a lot of five technique is a lot different. So yeah, you know, we've been talking to him about like the differences in steps, the differences in timing, um, where your hand should be certain times, um, just certain angles too. Like you know, getting a stance right because going from a four eye stance to a nine tech stance is completely different. And he is a, he has a different body type. He's lanky, he's long, but has a super rare ability to bend on a dime. And so just trying to teach him how to put all that together and, and letting him know the differences and going from where you were here. To where you are here and how it looks and how it can transition. Is leading the, leading the league in sacks a goal for you guys? I mean, it always is. You know, you always want to be like the best D-line and it's, it's, it's a goal in the back of our head. But, I mean, the goal every game is to be the, sm- the most ab- disruptive front. Um, and we want to affect the quarterback. We want to put him down. We want to create turnovers and we want to find ways to win the game. Um, and sometimes that may that may not be the numbers we like. We may get, have two sacks we may have 19 quarterback hits. And, you know, with two sacks you're not going to leave the league in, in sacks, but you know how disruptive we are is going to make us win the game. So that that's our goal, for sure. Salman, you were recently honored at Dak Prescott's foundation job. What did that mean? And can you talk a little bit about that experience? Yeah, no, uh, it meant the world to my family and I. You know, we've been very lucky to do work with Dak and his fa- family and his foundation. Um, you know, the Faith Fight Finish Foundation. You know, they're uh, um, you, you know, just super, super great people. Um, you know, just like like family to us now. Um, you know, Dak has donated to my foundation. We've partnered together. Um, you know, we're, we're included in one of his pillars of his foundation. Um, man, you know, it's just, just special work we're doing. You know, we're really trying to change the stigma around mental 
health in this world. Um, we're trying to make the world a better place, and we're all doing it together. You know, we're being vulnerable, we're being transparent, we're making sure people can can understand that help is it help is there, help is available. That you know, it's okay not to be okay, and that that, that there's light in the tunnel of the dark storm that they're going through. So to be honored by Dak, to the Dallas quarterback, uh, the Dallas Cowboys quarterback, and and one of the most prominent like, you know, America's team, um, you know, meant, meant a lot. And just the impact he brings to mental health, you know, meant a lot to me. All right, good. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you all.